What up, King Quarters? Been in the market for a rear seat for my 2022 King Quad 750 for a long time now. And I was looking at that Camco black board kit. It was 250 on Amazon for the longest time. Now, for whatever reason, it jumped up to like 375 or however much it is now, but it's way more expensive. So after a little bit of research, I found this Kimpex Nomad seat. And I ended up ordering it from Rocky Mountain, but I'm really glad I did. I just took it out of the box, took the plastics and stuff off the seat, but this seat material is really nice. I saw people complaining of other brands. Uh, the seat material wasn't that strong, but this stuff is really, seems to be really nice. The only thing is it's just a little bit slippery. But anyways, that's how it comes out of the box. Um, it's 30 degrees here in the Ohio Valley today. We're going to try to mount her up to the 22 king quad 750 i know they want you to u-bolt around these racks but i mean you got all these these pre-threaded holes all these mounts to the rack i never had these plastic covers off of here yet but it's just a shame i'm gonna try to figure out a way and hopefully we can maybe use these maybe take the rack off and stick it on the bottom of there as a template and see if we can maybe do that without having to use the u-bolts but anyways that's the initial unboxing and uh so far i'm happy with my purchase so found the english version of the instructions a little picture there a little parts list shows you some optional stuff that comes with this well that you can order separately from this thing but now we're on to step one so it looks like we got a bit of assembly to do before we start mounting it to the quad just gotta throw the little gas tank thing on it and it looks like we gotta throw the uh the little mounts that or the little uh walker things on the back of it so i'm a one-man camera show today i don't have anybody to hold the camera so i'm gonna go ahead and get these simple steps done and then we'll move on so here we are on the first step of this installation i was just gonna throw all this stuff on and then just come back after I did it but we're putting this gas can holder on and you just slide it down it's got these two holes that are like really close to the bottom of that plastic I, I don't know seems like there's somehow could have got a little more meat on those but I don't think that matters on this thing anyway it's just not going to have any real tension on it but let me go ahead and uh sorry like I said one man camera show here let me see here this on here it's weird there's a little bit of tension you gotta make sure this is on the front how it's supposed to be it's locked down now and it's bottomed out here but this is like kind of hard to push down i mean i went through this a couple times without the camera on and it's bottomed out but like you can still see these these threads under here and there was no rubber gasket in there i mean i know they advertise it. it's watertight and stuff and i'm sure it won't make a difference i mean we're not going to submarine this thing anyhow but um there it is but everything's really nice packaged everything's kind of separated this was in with these wing nuts and these lock washers and everything here so it's pretty straightforward everything is included like kind of each step has its own bag and hardware and stuff these things are plastic but they i mean i don't know i feel like they're pretty sturdy so all right i'm gonna go ahead and throw these bolts in here and we'll be back so these freaking uh bolts that mount to the seat a couple of things worth noting these are about as tricky as run dmc says it is uh you gotta put them in the threaded spots in the back of the seat well first you gotta cut the plastic off of them but there's a little bit of cardboard there was some cardboard in the threads of this one on this side and when i was trying to thread it in it almost felt like it was cross threaded so it took me a little while to get them lined up and tightened down properly now these rear ones this one mounts in fine and it's uh nice and loose in the hole and i can you know get it threaded perfectly fine but you come over to this side and this one I'm trying to get as much as I can here on camera. I'm actually working through my phone screen. But when you go to tighten this in, the plastic is so tight around the threads. 
the when you come in contact with this actual metal threads see it like wants to stop right there so it's telling me that this thing is like since it's catching the threads on the plastic it's almost either running into a wall back there or it's starting to cross it and I don't want that to happen so I guess I'm gonna take this all back off and maybe clean up these holes a little bit with a drill bit so I can get this freely in here instead of the threads grabbing on there so just something to take note of I would make sure that your threads fit freely through these holes before you get this mounted so you don't get the same problem I had probably a good idea for the front ones too but these ones weren't too bad at all but make sure you get the threads cleaned out in the backrest of the cardboard and stuff because that will delay you as well so do yourself a favor and clean out those rear holes with a 13 64th uh, drill bit and do it before you put this fuel can holder on because these two wing nut screws or bolts or whatever you want to call them just took me about a half hour to get them lined up properly because these little threads that they have installed in the plastic are not lined up 100% straight which is fine but I'm trying to get in here and get this on film where these are supposed to line up with those threads the plastic guides them the wrong way and they want to cross thread every time so after fighting it and trying to do it with it on i ended up taking everything off and taking this clear off of here i tried to do it by hand with a drill bit first and it didn't work so you gotta open up those holes so they're not grabbing the threads when you go to install this because you want to actually be able to wiggle this bolt around in the plastic so you can find these brass threads or whatever they are in here so you don't cross thread them and trust me if you don't it will take you just as long as it took me and don't try to force them and cross thread them because then you'll really ruin it so on to the next step so here on step number six it says align the right cover with the base you will need a hinge be careful there is a right and a left so I went ahead and pulled my two pins out of here and they ended up giving me two rights. I'm guessing that's what that big R is for. And when you put this in to the left, let me do this one man camera crew again. You can see uh, it's a little bit tight going in there. But anyhow, if you put it over here where it belongs on the right side, you can see how this is arced up right here. And how it snaps into place properly how it looks real nice right there well this one was in the other side so when we put this in hold on a second um it is obviously not going to line up i mean it's under a bit of tension right there but you can see where this will be upside down here because this side is supposed to be upwards because they gave me two rights so I'm gonna have to get a hold of either Rocky Mountain tomorrow or Kimpex and see if they'll send me a left pin because unless I'm missing something in the hardware they sent me two rights and for the record these were both installed in place like this one is when I took it out of the box I removed them uh, I was trying to put the, the doors on, but I figured I would show you guys that they gave me two rights. So, we'll see what happens tomorrow. Okay, got it on the bike and uh, just a mock-up. I really wanted to use those pre-threaded holes in the rack, but the only issue is, I mean, you could probably stack washers and... Uh, make it to where it would work but see the gap up there I don't know if I get my finger in here like look kind of right where my finger is pointing there is a gap in between that front mount and the box I mean you could probably make spacers and make it work but um, we're gonna use the u-bolt on the back here because the rack is is lined up just right but what I came to realize and I don't know if anybody else thinks the same way or not but when I first looked at these things I figured you know the passengers or your your passenger is going to be sitting on here 
and I was under the impression that these U-bolts and everything mounted here had to support the weight of the passenger. I know that's just crazy thinking, but your passenger is sitting on the rack and you know, their weight is going to be predominantly on the actual rack. So your U-bolts and everything that you're mounting in here doesn't really have to support anything other than the weight of whatever you might be carrying in this box, which I mean, I'm not going to be carrying anything super heavy in here. So I'm going to go right here on this little cross piece of the rack and it's going to be going uh, this way in here. Let me see where it is. It'll probably be somewhere in here and my back one is going to be somewhere in here. I'm going to have to obviously mark some lines. But what I did is I come under here and I caught this right on this back corner and I'm um, right about it three quarters on the you know where it starts to go upward these th I'm assuming these don't have to be absolutely perfect but this one is right about the same and for a reference point on the side here I went to this this mount right here and come up with about a half inch of where it starts to can't uphill and do the same thing on this side. I'm trying to do this with one hand. But, uh, you know, I think that's about as close as it's going to be. I mean, it doesn't have to be super OCD perfect. I mean, it looks pretty evenly across there. And, you know, I don't know. It looks good to me, especially where the seat placement is. So, we're going to try to get some holes marked up and get this thing drilled. So we used a paint marker to mark this back rack on each side. So we know where we're gonna be on that. So this front one, where we're gonna go on this inner support, you see where the seat's at. Right underneath it here, we're gonna go on this, where it goes kind of frontwards and backwards. So we're using a little bit of shade tree ingenuity since we can't get the paint marker in there. We put a little bit of red and tacky on this u-bolt and i'm gonna go up under there where i want it and i'm just gonna just make a print with this on the bottom there i'm just gonna go up and just kiss it with this red and tacky and hopefully that'll show us where we're gonna draw our holes so that's what we're gonna try so a little bit of shade tree ingenuity we put globs of grease on here and while this was mounted to the bike we got up under here and put our prints in so you can see they're fairly even. We did it on this side too, as uniform as we can. It's really hard, you're working on a blind under there, but we tried to get these. You can see where I kind of kissed them with the grease, but it's pretty uniform on each side. So just make sure your U-bolts line up to it. And back here, we used our paint markers. So we're just gonna kind of go in the middle there. These things don't have to be mounted perfect. Like I said, they're just supporting the weight of the cargo in the box, not your passenger. So our little grease print idea worked. Uh, they're pretty uniform. We put these little rubber things on here. I'm not sure. Probably going to get in here with a cutoff wheel and cut these down flush with the wing nuts because they stick up a good bit. You can see how far the gap is that they stick up. So we're going to try to get those just down for a little more clearance for whatever luggage you're carrying in here. But you see, I put the back one across the back rack down here and the front one. I tried to catch that diagonal piece which it worked out pretty well. When you're tightening these down, you gotta tighten them evenly because the, the, the thing wants to, you know, rock on you. So you wanna give one turn here, one turn here. Cool little drain plug I give you in here in case you get some water in there, you pop that out and drain it out. Cause these have rubber gaskets underneath of these plates. It's really nice. I'm so glad I went with this Kimpex Nomad other than the, that black bore one. Cause people say the black bore one rattles and stuff and uh, definitely get on my nerves. See, I got these, they're pretty much in the same place, but just went straight to the metal rack. I don't know if I might want to put a little piece of rubber in here to prevent that from wearing, but we might do that. It's cold. It's March. We're here in the Ohio Valley, so our real riding season doesn't, doesn't kick in for another month or so, but I'm probably going to put some rubber underneath of there to prevent that from eating away at that rack. But like I said, you're only supporting the weight of whatever's in the box with these things. And again, uh, you see how this pin goes across here and snaps into place real nice and neat. 
This is marked with an R because this is the right side marked with an R down there and an R on the pin. Well, on this side, you see it is marked with a somewhere. Maybe I covered it up with a plate, but this side was marked with an L. And I just have this in here temporarily like this because it's the wrong pin. See where the notch is the same as over there and how it's nice and neat. Well, this pin is also an... R pin, if I can't take dog on camera to focus it on there, there it is. This is an R pin also, and you can see it's the same exact pin on the other side. The only reason I have it in this way is just to get it mocked up for now. And like I said, I'm going to get a hold of Kim Pex or Rocky Mountain, whoever I got to get a hold of tomorrow to get me the left pin for this. So it will go nicely in that little groove also, but the R one is backwards. Then I put the washer in behind the little eyelet there so we could get proper clearance in here because there's weather stripping in between this where it comes down on top of here which is really nice because it prevents it from you know vibrating and causing any kind of noise plus it it's going to seal it pretty pretty close to being air and water tight but you got to watch you don't pinch that cable in there when you close this another thing i didn't care for is i already put these pins in here but there's little pins that go across here that hold these hinges in you can see it right on the side there. Um, those pins are plastic, so I really don't like that at all. I mean, you know, you're going to push this thing down and latch it like this, like that. You're pushing against that weather stripping. I'm sure it won't be that bad in the summertime when it's a little hotter. But when you push down and you latch this and you pull it up, there's a lot of tension on that, especially for being a plastic pin. I mean, I just don't like it at all. Uh, probably when I break them, not if I break them, when I break them, uh, probably end up just drilling this other side out and just running a bolt across there because, you know, this other side, which is mounted properly, let's close this thing here. So, yeah, you got to watch you don't pinch that cable in there. I got it kind of trained to go over there, but you got to line everything up. Uh, once you pull that down, like I said, you're fighting the weather stripping, but that's a good thing because it won't vibrate. So when you push this down like this, so when you got it, it you gotta really push down and then pull on it and there's a lot of tension on it which i mean i appreciate that it's a tight fit and i mean if these little plastic pins don't break it's gonna be a miracle i mean it would be just fantastic if if they didn't break but i don't know i just don't have much faith in it but when you open these because there is just that cable you don't want to throw them open you rip the cable right off or probably break the cable i just want to gently lean them forward and i don't know but that's all i got for now we'll see if we can get some another left pin tomorrow or hopefully this week weather's supposed to be bad anyway so we won't be doing any riding but the mock-up looks good i mean it looks good on the bike i got the seat pad in there and the seat pad is right over top of the rack. You can still get to the the gas fill. You can even pick this up if you want to. It's just Velcroed on there. But you see your, your passenger is sitting on this rack here. So I don't know. I might eventually end up putting something hard under there. But I'm 210 pounds. And I sat on this and kind of like, you know, bounced up and down a little bit. And like I was hitting bumps or whatever. And I don't know. I didn't feel anything. The seat cushion feels like it's pretty high quality. So... I don't know. I'm a pretty decent sized guy. So my little five-year-old riding on the back of there, whoever the heck's riding on the back, probably will be really comfortable. So like I said, it looks good on the bike. Um, got her nice and clean for the winter. I just got this thing last fall. So got a whole can of SC1 on there to hang out for the winter. Like I said, it looks super nice on the bike. So glad I went with this one. I mean, it kind of looks bulky, but I mean, it's functional, you know, functionality is what we're after. There ain't no weight there. So, you know, besides it being a little bit, you know, bulky looking, um, unless you have a decent sized passenger on there, I don't think it's going to matter as far as your, your riding. So like I said, my little five-year-old, he'll be back there. I won't even feel him. So. All right, let's see if we can get some extra pins this week. So I did end up calling Rocky Mountain ATV, where I bought this thing from, and 
they talked to me on the phone and they contacted Kimpex and as you can see they did send me uh, the proper uh, pin for this side. Um, there is definitely a difference. You can see here this one's got the R and see how that one's got the L and you can see how it's backwards like you know it's got to be in there because it has to fill this void in here. See how these work a you know to take these, to take these doors off you flip these up and it comes out of that gap there when you flip these up and it it just comes out the side comes out of these little uh these hinge here then you can take this door off but you also got to take your cable off here too i don't know why anybody would want to take these doors off and ride around with stuff in here just like a kind of a weird little bucket area on the back of your bike but i definitely won't be doing it my doors lids whatever you want to call them will constantly stay on but when you're putting these together make sure you got the l pin on the left side of the bike or like the i guess if you're in a car it'd be the driver's side best way to explain it and make sure that ridge is lined up because as you've seen before in the other videos they gave me two r's they gave me two of these and uh the r will definitely not work in this side so just something to keep in mind and another thing is since these plins are made of plastic um i'm sure they're a high quality polymer or whatever but being that they're so i don't know and they may never break but just an extra part i wanted to keep around uh i went ahead and looked up these pins on amazon i think i looked up kimpex uh nomad pins or whatever i did but i went ahead and bought another set just in case these ones happen to break here's the uh, OEM number or whatever from Kimpex. If you want to order an extra set of pins for your bike or yours, you can see how they're opposite. Um, you know, they're facing the same direction here, but that little nub is on the opposite side. That's because there is a right and a left. So, all right, guys, hope this helps. Uh, we have already taken this thing for a ride, and I've got to tell you, um, we are very, very pleased at the comfort and just the feel, fit and finish and everything with this Kimpex Nomad. The only thing I noticed was a little bit of rattling with the uh, the grips when we were riding around, but uh, I'm sure that's not a big deal. But the seat is just super comfortable and uh, we haven't got our little gas can yet for the back of it, but uh, be getting that before we hit the trails this summer. But for now, we're really satisfied with it. Um, it's everything we expected it to be, so. All right, King Quarters, we are out.